guys. Happy Monday. Go ahead and get your math notebooks. And we have a test tomorrow. So, we are going to be reviewing today over our math test, okay? What I go over with you will be directly from your math test and it's gonna be what you see tomorrow. If there is something that you're not sure of that we're reviewing today, you need to send me a message and make sure that you study that tonight. All right, you are gonna have some vocab on your test tomorrow. You need to make sure you come prepared knowing the definitions. Write this down in your math notebook. These words should already be in your math notebook. You just need to make sure you study them and memorize them. As you're writing them down in your math notebook, see if you can write down what they mean without looking it up right now. See if you can write down a definition without looking back in your math notebook or without looking it up on Safari. The ones that you cannot do that for are the ones that you need to study. And I will tell you, there will not be a picture for these vocab words. So some of you might be able to know what something looks like. Maybe it's a shape or a part of a shape, but you have to be able to tell it to me in words, math words, okay? Which is definitely different than just knowing what something looks like. So right now you're trying to write down a definition without looking it up. This will help save you time for studying too, because if you can write down a vocab definition word, you already know it. You don't need to waste time studying that one tonight. If you don't know any of them, that's okay. That just means those are what you need to study for tomorrow. All right, I'm gonna add to our list. We've got some more, number four. You can stand up if you need to. We have lots of vocab on this test. We have faces, vertices, edges, cubic units, volume, and three-dimensional shape. You are trying to write a definition for each one of those. Test yourself and see what you know.
this is just your vocab so far, but you have other stuff on your test. Yeah. This is just one part of it. This will probably be one of your longer tests. Um, typically, we do about 10 problems. Uh, this one's going to be about 15, probably. All right, last set of vocab words here. Prism. Cube. Cylinder. And ladies and gentlemen, I know this is a lot of vocab words, uh, but my daughter's in kindergarten at Port Lakes, and she has actually on her math test uh, today, uh, three-dimensional shape and all of these shapes, okay? So these are shapes that you have learned since kindergarten. It should be mastered in fifth grade then. Write your vocab words down. See which ones you know the definition of. Definition in math words. Not by identifying them in a picture. Math words. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the words that you could not write a definition down, you need to study. You need to write their definitions down later on your own time in your math notebook, okay? Using math words. We have had all of these before in our math notebook, okay? If you can't find it in your math notebook, you didn't take notes that day, then use Safari. Um, it's been within the last two weeks. Yep. Yes. For the test, are you allowed to use notes? No. All right. Number 12. You are going to be given this rectangular prism. I thought my drawing was way better this time. I had to look it up. But I think it somewhat looks like a shape. All right. You have to write down. Number of vertices is on this shape. Number of edges and number of faces. So this is where that vocab comes in handy. If you don't know what those words mean, how would you know how to identify the number that that shape has. You would not be able to. Right now, I want you to try and solve this. Again, this is to test yourself. See what you know. 
I know some of you do not seem like you are very ready for this test because you did not know many vocab words and I have lots of you sitting here not sure on this one either. Lots of studying it looks like tonight, guys. If you're not sure what one of these words is to be able to identify that part, then look it up right now. Looking at that rectangular prism, how many vertices does it have, how many edges, and how many faces? All right, let's go over this one. All right, vertices. What are vertices in simple words? On your definitions, your vocab, you're going to have an extended definition. But in short, what are the vertices, Malia? It's like the points. Like the points, yep. So we have one, two, two three, 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 four, four five, five, six, seven, eight, eight vertices. I think my purple's about done. Yep, we're done with that. Um, how many edges do I have? What are the edges? Mason? Like lines. Yeah, like your lines. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Man, all my markers are getting... There we go. I think they're not getting drawn enough. They're not getting thrown enough? Yeah. No. All right, last one. Your faces. What are your faces in simple terms? Alyssa? The flat side of the sheet. Yeah, like the flat surface. So I have the front, the back. I have two sides. I heard six in the bottom and the top. Good. For a total of, do we count bottom and top? No. Yes. Yeah. Okay, just check one more time. Bottom, <laughs> top, bottom. And then how many sides around it? Four for a total of six. Good. I think the first time we counted the bottom and the top twice. All right. Number 13. Number 13, I did not make in 3D. We are not going to solve it. I just wanted to show you if they're asking you to find the number of cubic units in a figure, what do you need to do? If they give you actual individual cubic units, what are you doing with those? Ben? Yeah, you need to count them, okay? You need to make sure you have some imagination. Remember, it's 3D. This is just flat, right? That's not in 3D. Remember, you're going to have a backside that you might not be able to see, okay? You've got to use some imagination there, okay? But you are just simply counting them, okay? You don't need to have a formula when it's set up with the individual cubic units. Number 14, however, do we have cubic units there? No. 
No, so we need a formula. Ladies and gentlemen, I am not giving you this formula on your test. There will be times that I do give you formulas, but tomorrow's test, you only have one formula to memorize. So I am not gonna give it to you. I would recommend when you get your test, when you start it right away at the top for your notes, write down what the formula is. Have it fresh in your mind. I will give you five minutes before your test to study. Have that formula fresh in your mind. Write it down right away, okay? What is the formula for value? Very nice, and we use just the first letter of these words. B for volume equals L for length times W for width times H for height. Or if they give you a base number, volume equals B for base times H for height. So what you, I want you right now to use your formula and tell me what is the volume for this shape. I thought that shape was my best one so far. I know I had some friends who already worked ahead on that one. That's okay. We're gonna be patient and let our other friends finish it. Find me the volume of number 14. All right, tell me, what is my equation here? Okay, we're gonna multiply two numbers at a time. We're not gonna try and do this in our head all at once. That's when silly mathematical mistakes happen. What is four times three? 12, and now I need to bring down my times 10. What is 12 times 10? That should be mental math. Am I done? No. I need a? Label. Meters. And am I done now? No. Meters what? Cubed. cubed. You can write the little three exponent or write the word cubed. Bradley. Both are going to be correct. Yep, either one. All right, number 15. I did not make this shape into 3D. I don't think it would have been possible for me. Um, I just made it flat. You are going to have where you have to find the value of an irregular shape like this. What do we do, though? Uh, we still use our volume formula of length times width times height, but I need to make this into what? Justice? I need to make it into two rectangular prisms or two prisms. So I have two options, right? I can cut it here. And this is prism number one. This is prism number two. Or you could slice it this way. Prism number one, prism number two. Okay? Then what do you do? Mimi? Good. So you have to find the volume of prism one, and then you have to find the volume of prism two. What do you then do with these two numbers? Uh, both add them. Brooklyn, add them. you need to add those two volumes together. Very good. Ladies and gentlemen, there's going to be lots of numbers around here, right? Yeah. Okay. Don't get overwhelmed. Take it one piece at a time, one dimension at a time. Okay. <clears throat> you can do it. You will only have one or two on your test like that, okay? And I have confidence in you. 
All right. Number 16. Uh, I numbered your vocab individually. On your test, they will be lumped together. That's why we have more problems in our review. You'll have the same, it's just your vocab. Uh, you'll have some matching in there, so I only count it as one problem then. All right, story problems. You are going to have three story problems. Number 16, Meg's cube has an edge that measures five inches, okay? And this is one of those things that I think would maybe help you, okay, to draw, okay? If you have a cube that has an edge of five inches, right now in your notes, I would draw a cube with an edge of five inches. There's a lot of times in uh, math, drawing helps us. I'll read it one more time. I have some friends who are just sitting. You should be taking notes. Meg's cube has an edge that measures five inches. Angela's cube has an edge of two inches. So we've got Meg's cube, and I'm just gonna draw it flat instead of 3D, has an edge of five. I'll put M for Meg. Angela's cube has an edge of two. If Angela's cube was stacked on top of Meg's cube, what would be the total volume of the combined solid? I want you to try that right now. If Angela took her cube and stacked it on top of Meg's, so you might need to have another drawing of that. What would that look like if Angela's cube was on top of Meg's cube? Give me the volume of the total value, the total volume of the combined solid when they're stacked together. I want you to try it. Write down an equation and try it. Do not just sit and write, wait for an answer. Mimi? Mm, I'm not going to tell you that part yet. No questions yet. I want you right now just to try. that shows Megan's cube on the bottom with Angela's cube on top, okay? This is the solid figure that you now have to find the volume for. When you find volume of an irregular shape, what do we have to do? We just did it. <coughs> Length times width times height, but am I only doing that one time? No. I'm gonna have how many prisms here? I'm going to have two prisms here. <coughs> Being these are a cube, what would be my equation for prism number one? And we'll go with prism number one is this one, and this one's prism number two. 
Okay, Angel's was prism number one. Bradley, you said already. Length is two, and because it's a cube, the width is also going to be two, and the height will also be two. What about for Meg's cube? What would be my equation, Bradley? It Five times five times five, right? Because if one edge is five, it's a cube. That means also my length is five and also my width is five. What is going to be my next step here to do? Sophia? Uh, multiply. Good. So I need to multiply my first one and I need to multiply my second prism. And then what do I do with those two? I, I need to add them together. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure that you don't look at this and go... 2 times 2 times 2 is 6. Is that right? No. No. Okay. Uh, we really struggled. We've done 5 times 5 times 5 last week. Did we get that correct? No. No. Okay. Only multiply 2 numbers at a time. So what is, let's do 2 times 2 is? 4. 4. And now multiply that by 2, we get 8. Okay. Uh, what is 5 times 5? 25. 25, and then multiply that by 5, what do you get? 125. 125. And then I, I need to add what to 125? 8. That is your answer then, with a label, of course, which I didn't give you guys a label on that one. All right. Are there any questions for your test tomorrow? No notes. You need to memorize your vocab, memorize your formula. Okay, any questions? All right, you guys do have an assignment tonight. Um, you have some story problems on Schoology. Under math, if you had there, uh, Malia, we turn off my left light. So under math, it is called 12-7 worksheet, and I believe it's only five problems. Oh, less than that, four problems you guys have, okay? Four problems and then study for your test. All right? All right, go ahead and get started, guys.